Right, here's the question then. A and B. I've got it summarized here. Here it is. Let's have a look at it then. We'll move B out of the way for now. We'll worry about that in due course. Just give ourselves plenty of room. Okay, let's do A. The first thing to do is write it Y in user friendly form. So I'm going to bring this up to the top. It's power quarter, but when we swing it up to the top, it flips the sign of the index to minus one quarter. So do you mind the X then? Uh, something to that, use a power rule, times of something to the one less. Multiplied by the something differentiated, which is minus 20x to the 4. Uh, minus is cancel, we end up with 20 over 4 is 5x to the 4, times 9 minus 4x to the 5, to the power minus 5 over 4. So that's part one. Part two. Okay, this is the quotient rule. V times du dx, 6x squared, minus u, more than one term, put a bracket, times the V dx, minus 3x squared is that. All over v squared, isn't it? So what does that equal? So that equals, expand this bracket here. 42 x squared minus 6x to the 5. There's two minuses, so it's a plus. We've got 9x squared. And then we've got 6 uh, plus 6x to the 5 all over the 7 minus x cubed all squared. This cancels with that, doesn't it? And we get 51 lots of x squared over 7 minus x cubed all squared. That's our answer. So that's part A. Now part B. Let's have a look at this. So we need to sketch y equals sine to the minus 1. So let's sketch the sine function first which we know looks like, uh, oops, looks like this, unlike that. There's minus pi over 2, there's pi over 2. Here's 1, here's minus 1. So using that information, that's a sine curve, we can sketch the inverse sine function now, can't we? So let's have a go at that. Uh, okay. So let's have a go at sketching this. As best we can. So what we do with this x and y is we pull it off the page and with the x twist it over so the x becomes the y and the y becomes the x. So instead of it, it's going to go around the other way, isn't it? So it's going to go like that. Oops. Get it right in a minute. I'm going to do a dashed line because it's a digital pen and it's difficult to draw it with a the digital pen, like so. I think that's as good as I'm going to get. Uh, this is minus 1, this is 1, this is pi over 2, this is minus pi over 2. Okay, there's our y equals sine to the mi minus 1x function, inverse sine function, sketched. That's part 1. So I can get rid of this now that I we use to draw it. Okay, now part two. Uh, well, clearly x equals sine y. So differentiating with respect to x on both sides, sine goes to cos y, multiplied by dy dx. So dy dx then. So you've got a 1 over cos y. Cos y uh, sine squared plus cos squared y equals 1. So cos y 
So you've got a 1 minus sine squared, isn't it? So square rooting, both sides you get 1 over plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. That's dy dx. But uh, sine is always going to be less than or equal to 1, so this is a positive square root. Um, but if you look at the dy dx function for the inverse function, you can see it's always positive. It's always positive in the in the sketch. So it's going to be the positive solution is the answer. And I think the question says justify your answer. Choice, choice of sign here. Uh, from sketch. Okay, good. Let's have a look at the solutions. Let's go to that part. There's part A, which I think we've got okay. And part B, I hope so. Part B. Um, okay. Okay, 1 over 1 minus x squared. So I needed to put that in. 1 over 1 minus x squared, because x is sine y, isn't it? So I should have done that as well, put that down there. So at the end there, put the sine y, y is equal to x. And so you've got dy dx in terms of x. Probably the question asked that, actually in terms of x. There it is there. So that was important to put that down. 